Today I'm going to talk about the supplies I like to use when working with graphite. Hi there, my name is Michelle Cashmore and in today's tips and techniques video I'm going to be talking about the supplies I like to use when working with graphite. Graphite is a great medium for a beginner as you don't need an awful lot to get started with and what you do need tends to be pretty inexpensive and easy to find. So I'll start off by talking through the essential supplies that I use, so pencils, papers and everything you need to make a, dr a drawing from scratch. But I'm also going to talk a little bit about some more optional supplies that I also like to use, so these are more just nice to haves. So let's move on to seeing the supplies themselves. So for the supplies, I'm going to start off by going from what I think are the most essential supplies to the more optional ones. So the most important thing to begin with is, of course, the pencils. Now, hopefully you can see these. I like to use Faber-Castell 9000 pencils. They come in a range from 6H, which is the hardest pencil, to 8B, which is the softest and darkest pencil. The 8B can get really very, very dark, and you can get some really, really good blacks with it. The pencils themselves, they're smooth. They've got very few gritty chunks in them, as you can get with some cheaper quality pencils. And they're easy to blend. They're pretty easy to find. I can get them really easily in all my local art supply shops, and they're not very expensive. So they're just a, I just find that they're a really good all-round pencil. Next up is the paper. So I find with graphite, it's a little more forgiving with paper than other types of mediums, such as coloured pencil. So most good quality, relatively smooth paper should work. I like to use Fabriano Artistico hot press watercolour paper. So the one I have here, it's just a it's just a little five inch by seven inch pad. It's in traditional white. Um, these days I do actually prefer the extra white more than the traditional white, but I have a lot of traditional white paper here, so I'm going to I'm going to keep on using it until I use it all up. But really either traditional white or extra white, they're both good. So in addition to pencils and paper, erasers are also really important tools. I've got a few different sizes that I like to use. Right in here. So my favourite of all are the Tombow Mono Zero erasers. So these come in two different styles. They've got a, there's a round tip one, which is this one here, and a square tip one. And I really like them as they're really useful for getting into small areas for lifting up fine details. I like it for creating the appearance of fur and feathers because you can lift off really fine lines with them, particularly if you use a craft knife to cut off the edges of them so you've got really sharp edges to them. I also have a Stapler Mars plastic eraser which is a bit bigger. It does, this, it does a similar job but it's not quite as good as getting into all the fine areas and fine details. And finally I've got a larger one here. Really, any good quality eraser should work for you. Just make sure that they're clean when you put them on the paper because otherwise you can leave uh, marks in the paper that can be impossible to get rid of. Some cheaper erasers can do that as well. So make sure you test it first before using it on your good piece of paper. For sharpeners, I have two that I like to use. The first is the one that I now use at my desk. This is the Derwent Superpoint uh, manual sharpener. It's, it's what's called a helical sharpener, um, just for just in the way that it sharpens. It's just to do with the type of blade that uh, is used to sharpen the pencil. It produces a really nice, long, fine point, and hopefully it should keep sharp for longer as well. But the, the blade inside shouldn't go blunt, as it's a more helical type. The, re the reason that I switched to using it from my other one uh, was because I found that it got a little blunt the boys got a little blunt too early for my liking. So this is the one that I used to use and I still I still use it for travelling and for pencils that I can't fit in the manual sharpener anymore. And this is a Kum long point sharpener. It actually has, it's a two stage sharpener where you sharpen the wood on one side and then it exposes the, the core of the pencil and then you use the second uh, sharpener to sharpen that. So both of them are really good, they produce really long uh, sharp points, which is what I really like to have for graphite pencil. 
So these I would consider these next ones I would consider essential, um, but they're not as essential as the previous ones. So the first one is brushes. So I've got two here. Right, so the first one is a Faber Castell drafting brush, and I like to use this to brush any eraser crumbs or dust from my work as I'm working. As as you're working, it does tend to build up, especially if you're picking areas off the eraser and drawing them back in. So this just helps to keep everything clean. If you don't have one of these, then a soft paintbrush can also do the job. And for travelling, I actually like the paintbrush better because it's much smaller and easier to fit in a pencil case. And for once you've, once you've finished your work, I find a fixative is really important because graphite smudges can smudge quite easily. So I use Dale Rowney Perfix Colourless Fixative. It just You just spray it on in a very even light layer, being very careful not to overdo it. You also need to make sure and work in a very well ventilated area because it's it's quite fumy when you spray it and the same is true of most fixatives. Now you may hear some places say to use hairspray because it's a cheap alternative. I can't recommend it at all. It's not in Hairspray is not intended for artwork, it's not archival, it tends to yellow over time so while it might do the job uh, there and then as you spray it over time it has the it has the potential to ruin your drawing so I always think it's just worth going for a proper fixative that's intended for artwork. Now these next ones are definitely more optional. So the first of the more optional supplies is a sandpaper block and you can buy these quite inexpensively at a lot of art shops. It's just it's a little it's a little wooden uh, stick that's got some small bits of fine grit sandpaper stapled to it and you can use this to sharpen the point of your pencils when you don't want to do a full sharpen as the the sharpeners can chew through your pencils quite quickly, they can waste quite a lot of it. If you just need to get a little bit of a, a fine point for some details then you can just uh, use the sandpaper to, uh, to sand away the point and get a, a sharper point again. I also have these, so for blending, so you don't need to use tools for blending um, graphite, particularly with Faber -Castell color, uh, the Faber-Castell pencils, as they do blend together quite easily just by layering themselves. But for some extra smooth areas, so for example if I'm drawing a horse and the leather work of the bridle is quite smooth, then I like to use these little blending tortillons uh, just to smooth out that graphite surface. And they're Again, they're pretty inexpensive, they're just little twists of paper and I always keep them even when they get dirty uh, because the dirty ones are good for blending very dark areas whereas I keep the cleaner ones for blending light areas. If you use a dirty one over a light area then you'll just smear extra graphite on which you might not want. For backgrounds and large areas or areas where you might want a more mottled effect there's also graphite powder. I bought a bag of mine from Jackson's and I just keep it in this little tub um, and it can speed up covering large areas with powder quite quickly, you just uh, you just apply it on. So I use these soft tools which I think were originally intended for pan pastels and for blending pastels but they're just like little, almost like makeup sponges and you can get these plastic tools to help get more control of them as well. And you also get these little small ones here, and they I found them really good for applying the graphite powder to the paper. I have tried to use a brush with it before, but I found the the powder just fell off when I tried to brush it on. The sponges do a much better job of making it stick to the paper. And finally, the one supply that I really like for any work based on paper is painter's tape. So. I like to use I like to stick down my paper to a board to keep it rigid while I'm working and just to stop it moving around to keep it all flat and keep it all neat. This the painter's tape's really good in that it's low tack, so if you're provided you're careful and use a good quality paper, it will peel back off the paper without making a mess. But you may have seen this this blue tape on many of my videos. Oh, not quite finally. 
because there's one more thing that I forgot. So the other thing, the, the remaining thing I like to add is pencil extenders. So when the pencils get really short, they can get quite hard to work with. So you can see this one here has been well used. But by using a pencil extender, you can get much more life out of them for longer. It just lets you get the mo absolute most out of your pencils. And that is it for this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it and have found it useful. If you'd like to see more and be kept up to date with all my latest videos, then please do subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, and at my website, michellecashmoreart.com. I hope to see you again soon.